Hello and welcome to another book shopping road trip video. This is the second episode in this series. In my first book shopping road trip video, I went to a bunch of small towns in Texas and checked out their bookstores. And today I'm doing the same thing. And I'm so excited because I picked out four bookstores that look so cute and uh, it's gonna be so fun. So our first stop is Bernie, Texas. In my last video, I also went to Bernie, Texas, and I tried to go to a store called The Bookshop Under the Windmill, but it was closed when I went. So we're back in Bernie again because I actually checked the hours of the store this time, so it'll hopefully be open. Ugh, the name is so cute, The Bookshop Under the Windmill, and there's like a literal giant windmill that the bookshop is under. Is that not the most adorable small town bookshop name you've ever heard? And this is a used bookshop that's a part of the library system, so all of the proceeds go to the library. And recently, I have been obsessed with checking out different towns' libraries bookstores number one because i love supporting the library system big library user myself and also there have been just like incredible prices and incredible finds that i've had i'm talking like two and three dollar books so i'm hoping we have the same success Look how cute this bookshop is with the windmill. Out front, they had a cart that was three books for $1, which is a crazy deal. And then they also had $1 books. Here is my mom putting out the books she knows in the cart. And then we went inside and this bookstore was way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So there was a ton of books to look at. This mystery author starts all of her books with a different letter of the alphabet, which I thought was really fun and unique. Then I headed to the YA section. I always see the Mortal Instruments series at used bookstores. I read it in middle school and it was such a good series. They also had this series of unfortunate events, which I've never read, but I did watch the movie. Then in the romance section, there was a ton of Nora Roberts books. I've never read a book by her before. I also saw the book Bridget Jones's Diary, and I've seen the movie before, so now I kind of want to read the book. I also really want to read another Ellen Hildebrand book, but none of these summaries sounded that interesting to me. And then they also had a new books section with books from the last few years. Okay, I just got to the bookstore. There was so many good books in there and the prices were crazy. The majority of the books were two or three dollars, but then newer books were around like eight dollars. And I ended up getting three books. I almost got some Ellen Hildebrand books, but I just, I don't know, I was indecisive and I wasn't sure which one to get or if they sounded good. So if any of you guys have any Ellen Hildebrand recommendations, I really liked The Perfect Couple by Ellen Hildebrand. That's the only one I've read by her, but what should I read next by her? Here are the three books that I got. First up, I got The Beach Lane, which I've never heard of before and I feel like I rarely buy books I've never heard of, but the plot just sounded so good. It is about a girl who is formerly New York's it girl, but after her family fell into a financial collapse, she is trying to find a new way to get back into the social scene. So she decides to become an au pair for a very wealthy family. And she's living in the Hamptons with two other girls who are also au pairs of wealthy families. And it says, all three girls will soon find out balancing their new jobs, their new romances, and the Hampton social scene is no easy feat. But if they can stick it out, they might just have the summer of their lives and i was like oh that literally sounds so good then i got after you which is the sequel to me before you and i own me before you i haven't read it yet but i saw this and i was like okay the second book in the series i should get it it's only three dollars i'm a little nervous because i've never bought the second book in a series without reading the first one first so it's like what if i don't like me before you now i own the sequel so i'm committed i have to read it i wasn't sure if i should read the summer or not since it's the sequel i don't want any spoilers so i I will read you guys the one sentence summary for Me Before You, the first book. It says, a girl in a small town forms an unlikely bond with a recently paralyzed man she's taking care of. So that's the premise for the first book. And the first book is also a movie. So I really want to read the book and then watch the movie. Then I got The Home Wreckers. And the reason I thought this looks so good is it says, love, murder, and faulty wiring. I was like, murder and romance. I have been loving mystery romance combos recently. And I read the plot for this book and it sounds crazy. There's so much going on. I'm like, what in the world is this book? It's about a girl named Hattie who works in restoring homes, which number one, that is such a cool job. Like, I just want to know more about her job. But then it says a Hollywood producer gives her the opportunity to star in a beach house renovation reality show called The Home Wreckers Beach House. So I'm hoping it's like a beachy summary book. And also also, a reality show is so fun. I just read If the Shoe Fits, which takes place on a reality dating show, and I loved the book, and it was so cool to see, like, the behind the scenes of how they filmed the show and, like, reality TV 
TV drama and all that. And so I was like, this sounds like a perfect next book to read because I'm suddenly obsessed with reality show books. And it also says they cast a male lead who may be her love interest or maybe her ultimate antagonist. So we've definitely got romance. And you think that's enough plot for this book, right? That sounds like a full summary, but no, there's more. During the demolition, evidence comes to light that points to the mysterious disappearance of a young wife and mother years before. So we've also got a double murder with a detective investigating the case, an arsonist on the loose, two men playing with her emotions, and layer upon layer of vintage wallpaper causing havoc. Will Hattie ever get her happily ever after? <sighs> wow. That is a lot going on. And one of you guys messaged me on Instagram that this book is really good. So it makes me even more excited. That is all the books I got from the bookshop under the windmill. Next up, I'm gonna go to the Bernie bookshop, which I have been to before, but I was like, I'm already in Bernie to go to the bookshop under the windmill. So I have to also go to the Bernie bookshop because I love it so much. It's one of my favorite bookshops. Okay, let's go. You certainly need a lot of caraphernalia. Look how gorgeous these shelves are. I just love the dark wood. I want them in my house. I have never read any books by this author before. Oop, I just knocked over the books, but don't worry, I fixed them. But I want to read The Kiss Quotient and The Heart Principle by her. I also thought the friend zone looked really good. It's about a girl who meets a cute guy at a wedding, but he wants a big family and she can't have kids, which sounds heartbreaking. In a holidays, I want to read this at Christmas time for sure. Okay, so I hate it, maybe someday, but I didn't realize the sequel, maybe not, was so short. So now I kind of want to read the sequel just to see if I also hate it. I've heard so many good things about Cruel Prince and I need to read it ASAP. I feel like I'm going to be entering my fantasy era soon. Okay, I just got to the Bernie bookshop. Oh, that bookshop is so cute. I love the big wooden bookcases that they have. They are so pretty and they have so many like new popular books. Ugh. Anyway, I ended up getting two books. I got Hopeless by Colleen Hoover and Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. I'm also just now realizing I didn't read the summary of either of these books. I just bought them solely because of the authors. So let me read the summaries real quick so I can tell you guys what they're about. Okay, so Hopeless is about Skye and Dean, and Skye is a senior in high school, and both her and Dean have a very promiscuous reputation, and it says that something about Dean sparks memories in Skye of her deeply troubled past, so she's trying to keep him at arm's distance. However, he has secrets of his own, and once they're revealed, Skye is changed forever. So it sounds like a true Colleen Hoover book that is probably going to break my heart, but I just love Colleen Hoover's writing style. I mean, obviously she is so popular. She just has such a way of having like such deep romances then two can keep a secret by karen m mcmanus karen m mcmanus also wrote one of us is lying which i believe is her most popular book and i've read that one along with one of us is next so i was like i really want to read another one by her because she writes such good ya mysteries Okay, so this book is about Ellery and Malcolm. Ellery's aunt went missing and Malcolm's brother's girlfriend was murdered. And it sounds like the town they live in, Echo Ridge, is a place where girls often go missing and sometimes wind up dead. So we've got this town where like murder and missing people is super common. And it says, someone is determined to keep Echo Ridge in the headlines. They've declared open season on homecoming. And Ellery and Malcolm are somehow at the center of it all. Something else I love by Karen McManus is she always has multi-POV. And I just think it's so fun because we get to explore so many characters okay and that is all the book shopping for today tomorrow we're gonna go to a town called lano texas a little tiny town to visit two more bookshops okay i will see you guys tomorrow Good morning and welcome to day two of book shopping. I just got to Lano, Texas and the first store we're going to is called Records and Things Strange aka Wrath, which I just love that abbreviation. Anyway, I looked at their pictures online and it looks like they have obviously tons of records, lots of like knickknacks and tons of books. So I'm excited and hopefully we find some good things. Here's my dad looking at books. This store had so much stuff. There was stuff stacked on tables, stuff stacked on the floor. It was honestly really cool how much knickknacks and books they had. Like, look at these old radios. How cool. And this place was pretty big. Even hallways were lined with books. They had old maps, Western magazines. I thought this old book from 1949 was pretty cool. It's crazy to think somebody had this and read it so many years ago. And the amount of records in this store was absolutely insane insane. 
there was also a ton of old westerns and textbooks along with other antique books. I also thought this dictionary was cool and very fun. And then there were also lots of classic books as well, which I've never gotten into reading classics, but maybe I'll try one one day. I just got a rat. I didn't end up buying anything, which is a little bit of a bummer, but that's okay. It happens. It was actually a really cool store though. Like it was so fun to look around. They had so many records. It was insane. Like if you are somebody who collects records, you should 100% go to this store. And they also just had some cool random things like old vintage glasses. They had these cool Western magazines and I almost bought one low key. Maybe I should have gotten one as like a coffee table magazine. That would have been cool. The only reason that I didn't get any books is I just didn't really find anything that I was interested in. I feel like at used bookstores, either I get really lucky and they have a ton of modern books that I'm interested in, or they have like really cool old vintage books that I just want to buy to have on my bookshelf because the covers are cool. But a lot of times used bookstores just kind of have like 20 year old books. They did have some good classics, but I'm also just not really interested in classics. However, if like the types of books I showed are your kinds of books, then you definitely like this store. Next up, literally right down the street, there is another used bookstore called Bessemer Books, which is also also a used bookstore so yeah we'll see what we find there this place was surprisingly really big they had an insane collection of harlequin intrigue books which are romantic suspense novels they also had quite a big mystery section and a texas book section which is always cool to see as a texan and then the romance section it was mostly older romance books you know where like the shirtless dudes are on the covers and they look really cheesy but there was some nora roberts books still haven't read any books by nora roberts but i see her books literally everywhere at used bookstores so let me know if you've read any nora Robert's books and if they were good. They also had a techno thriller section, which after Googling is apparently a combo of action adventure and sci-fi, but I like to think they're thrillers where the characters just really love techno music. Then I checked out the YA section where they had a Pretty Little Liars book, a Gossip Girl book, which I didn't even know was a book series. And then they had some cool vintage looking books. I love the covers. Okay, I just got a Bessemer book. There was so many books in there and I also didn't end up getting anything, which is kind of a bummer. I feel like that's kind of a lame way to end this video by not getting anything at the last two bookstores. But I also just love book shopping and I hope that you guys also love book shopping even if you don't end up buying anything or even if I don't end up buying anything. I hope you still thought it was fun to look around with me. They had all the basics like murder mystery, romance, fiction, and they also had a lot of really niche sections. Like they had a ton of books from different countries. I feel like it would be a really cool bookstore if you were looking for something really specific because they had a lot of shelves with very specific categories. But yeah, it was cool to look around. And that is all the bookstores that I have planned. I also plan to go to another library's bookshop in Johnson City, Texas, but unfortunately they are remodeling. So that was a big bummer. But yeah, let me know if you guys want me to do a third episode in this series. And if you know of any small towns with cool small town bookstores within like an hour or two of Austin, definitely let your girl know. And I still feel like I got so many good books yesterday. I'm definitely gonna start Hopeless by Colleen Hoover soon. And then don't know which of the other ones I'm gonna start second. But if you guys have read any of the books that I got yesterday, let me know your thoughts and if they're good. All right, and with that, I I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!